Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be sharing God's truth with you today. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You are the blesser. And you desire for all the families of the earth to be blessed. Thank you. Because you are bringing your truth to us. And it's coming with understanding. That we may walk worthy of you. And fulfill your word on the earth. Thank you Holy Spirit. You're guiding us into all truths today. Just like Jesus said. And we believe. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we are looking at how to end the year. And I'm sharing with you God's plan to bless the whole earth. That's his plan. Now, I've shown you, he says, if you are Christ... If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And because you're Abraham's seed, you are the one that God spoke about, that in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So now, am I just going to sit down there and say, I'm the seed of Abraham, so my family is blessed because of me? Yes, it is true. But it doesn't mean the blessing will be seen in their lives until you begin to do something about the blessing. So yesterday I was talking to you about what the blessing does in you. Number one, it prospers you. The blessing brings about prosperity. And I say prosperity is not just about money or about big house or driving good cars. No, prosperity starts from the mind. When God prospers you, what is prosperity? Your ability to flow progressively with the possibilities of God. That is what prosperity is. Not being caged or limited by circumstances. So you want to prosper in your health? What does it mean to prosper in your health? It doesn't matter what the doctors say. I just know what to do. <laughs> Praise God. How do you prosper in your finances? It doesn't matter what comes my way. I, I know what to do. God, I know how to talk to the Lord and, and, and things will change. Money will show up or the bills will be paid. I just know how to do. I just know what to do. That is prosperity. It doesn't mean having all the money in the world. But it means having access to all the money in the world. <laughs> Praise God. Did you see that? I said, prosperity is not about having all the monies in the world. It actually means having access to all the monies in the world. Praise God. That, that's financial prosperity. The same thing with health, prosperity in your health. See, it's not about having going or being in the best hospital. It's, it's about having access to the best of health care. <laughs> in the world. You know what I mean by that? Now that doesn't mean going to a physical hospital. That also means receiving wisdom on what to do in a particular situation. See, sometimes people die not because God couldn't help them but because they couldn't receive the wisdom of God in that situation. Now, I've seen that happen several in, in my family. Maybe there's a challenge somewhere and then, oh, the question will go, say, Lord, what, what, what would you have us do now? And then the Lord will tell you, go to Susan so person, or call Susan so person, or do Susan so thing. And then we do it, and then the problem is solved. What is that? Having access to what you need. There's a financial challenge. You know, that's how Jesus worked. That's why Jesus didn't have to have all the money in the world. But the truth is, he had access to all the monies in the world. Even fish brought money for Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. So, so when Jesus needed money and what was close by was the fish. So okay, Peter, take your hook. Go to the river. The first fish you catch, open the mouth, you will see money. Money was stored up there for Jesus. Praise God. That's what prosperity is. So what I just explained to you now, where's the place of toiling? See why he says toiling does not increase it. Proverbs 10, 22, the Amplified Version. It says, toiling doesn't increase it. Toiling doesn't increase the blessing of God. So quit thinking you will have to toil.
to get that thing that you want to get. No. What you need is the blessing. What you need is to function in the blessing. And listen, when you now come to that place where you know that because of you, your family is blessed, you will begin to take charge and responsibility over your family. I remember on the first of, of this month, we were praying during our 24 hour fast, and the Lord gave us an instruction. And he said, every day, if you can break bread, do it. If you don't want to break bread, then write this down where you will see it. Now, this was instruction from the Lord. Because he explained to us the reason you're breaking bread so that you will remember. Now, if you cannot break bread, if you're not sure you can break bread, so you remember this statement I'm about to tell you then make sure you write it on somewhere conspicuous where you can see it every time. If, if, if you sleep here, if you can put it on the wall of your bed. So the moment you wake up, that's the first thing you are looking at. Okay. And, and now you know why you put it there. So you are going to do what I'm about to tell you to do. Now this is the instruction from the Lord. So I, I, I had to share this background before I give the instruction so that you will understand what you are doing. Now, the Lord have told us that in this season, a lot of terrible things will happen. Yeah. But you know, he knows what he is doing perfectly. And that's why he's giving his children instructions. And as we apply this instruction to ourselves and to our lives, we will be safe. And not just us, we and our household. Now, you need to know this. There are certain people on earth who have been marked for destruction. There are certain people that will not enter into 2021. There is no amount of prayer that will save them. See, because their time ends now. Now, why is that so? It's another day stock. So let's focus on what we're doing now. So, God is saying to you now that, look, I'm bringing this message to you so that you will take charge of your family and those that are connected to you. That's your family, actually. So, I said, you are going to write Psalm 103, verse 4. Now, you can read from verse 1 to verse 5. But, but the focus specifically for the end of this year, into January next day. The focus is this, verse 4. It says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Let me read from the New King James now. It says, Who redeems? I want you to look at that word carefully. He used the word redeems, not redeemed. He says, who redeems your life from destruction? Now, he didn't use the word delivers. He used the word redeem. And then he says redeems, meaning it's a present continuous thing. It's not something that was done once. It's something that is done continuously. So he says, God redeems your life from destruction. Now, here's what the Lord said we should do. He said, look, this word must be your focus. And not just you now. You must pray this over your family. Over the family that you came from. Over everyone that is connected to you by family. You know what, you know what God said? That is, now you understand what I'm saying? God said, because of you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, God is instructed that you hold on to this truth. That it is God's job to redeem your life from destruction. It is God's job because you are the blessing of God in that family. God will redeem everybody's life there from destruction because of you. 
It's a truth you must carry in your heart. So, so I said, if, if you can break bread on a daily basis now, you, now you can choose to break bread on a daily basis as a family. You know, you get your children and your wife or your spouse together and you say, you know what, can we, can we just pray and declare this word? And we take this, we, we, we declare it over breaking of bread. And you do it. And you declare, or if you can't do that every day, or you do the two together, you put it, you put it where you where it to be so conspicuous. You see, verse Psalm 103, verse 4. He redeems my life from destruction. So when you see it every day, say, Lord, thank you. Because today you have redeemed our lives. You have redeemed every member of my family's life. Everyone that is connected to me, you have redeemed their life from destruction. And he's doing that today. He's doing it today. Why is this so important? Because there are certain people who have been marked. They've been marked for death. And it's not God that's going to kill them. But their time on earth is done. Now, here's, here's, here's the important thing you need to know. And what is that? I'll, I'll give you the story of Saul, King Saul, and Jonathan, his son. Now, now you, know, you know the story, Saul, God chose Saul, made him king, but he, he, he didn't obey God. And so his kingship was taken away. Actually, his kingship was taken away from him three years after he became king. That's when God said, this guy, he cannot do it. I'll get someone else. So people can fail God like that. And God began to search for another king. And then David was born. And David, God began to train him and all that. Now, Jonathan was the son of Saul. Jonathan saw the grace of God on David's life. And he believed that there was grace on David's life. And then Jonathan went to David and said, look, I want to make a covenant with you. See, I'm not going to drag thrones with you. It's clear God has spoken that you will be king. So no, I'm not going to drag you with you. I will be your next in command. That's the best I wish for. And then the Bible says he made a covenant with David. Now, that covenant couldn't have been broken. It, he, was, he didn't intend to break it. So what happened? Jonathan died the same day with his father in the same war with his father. Now, he didn't know that his father, that was the war that was going to take his father's life. So because he lacked knowledge of that, he followed his father to that war. So he died, not because God wanted him dead, but he died because he followed his father to his death. You know, sometimes people argue that if Jonathan hadn't died, he would have dragged the throne. No, there was no way he was going to drag the throne with David because he had already made a covenant with David. And he was a good man. But you see, because he couldn't make a decision between David and his father to choose who to follow clearly, he believed in David Yet he wanted to hold on to his father. For whatever reason. He knew the anointing had left his father. He knew that. He knew an evil spirit was troubling his father. He knew that. Yet, he still hung, hung on to his father. And then he died his father's death. Same death that took his father to him. Now, that's, that's the problem with, with, with the season that we're in. Now, if, if you don't understand, you will walk right with someone who has been earmarked for death. And you will follow the person to their death and, and to your own death also. But that's why the Lord is saying, look, he's raising up people who will intercede. And that's what I'm teaching you to do. So you're praying for your family members every day. Every day. Listen, till the end of this year, I sense in my spirit that there, there is an angel that has been released. And he's marking people for death. But when you stand in the gap, 
because you came from that family and you represent everyone in that family and you are the one to bring God's blessing to them, they will leave. Praise God. So I've just shared with you what to do. I'm going to continue this tomorrow. Praise God, because my time is up today. Now tomorrow is Christmas Day. Now how are you planning to celebrate Christmas? Make sure you enjoy yourself. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.